Hi there guys, we're just going to look at some footage from the Grenfell fire um, which reserved estimates say that at least 150 people died that's reserved estimates but uh, the mainstream media are saying 17 people died when there's a capacity of uh, about 500 people within the uh, 25 stories living space um, it's a very huge complex so let's just play this this is one of the neighbours that live uh, very close to the towers and he hears shouts uh, from different floors and you'd expect the fire services to be doing something as far as I understand the, the police and rescue services were there 6 or 7 minutes into the the fire which started it was believed to be about uh, one of the lower floors between about the fourth and sixth floor but how did the, the fire spread so quickly with uh, the, the fire brigade um, called out just to a, a very small part of the building and within five five hours half the tower was on fire um, and as, as we've seen when, when we woke up and got the news of it the entire tower had been burned right through um, which is uh, quite something really um, it was believed that the, the fire brigade didn't even really get to sp start spraying water onto the fire for several hours several hours after um, they were called so this is clearly daylight uh, it becomes daylight in the UK in the summer time about probably about could be 5 a.m. Not really sure when exactly this is, but... This is a bit crazy, man. You would have thought in 2017 they would have had better tools. Like, I can see people there, like, ready to be rescued, but we just can't get to them. Do you know what? Let me go and tell the firefighter I can see that person. Hold on. Let me go and tell them, because I just saw another person. One sec, guys. Good boy, yeah? Let me go on top. All right, listen, I've just seen another family on the 11th floor. Yeah, I've just seen another family on the 11th floor. Um, two children and an adult. The third window to the right, third window to the right. There's another guy as well wait, waving um, a towel. There's another guy waving a towel. So if you look and get to him, he's on the 11th floor, door number 87. 11th floor. Door number 87. Door number 87, 11th floor. He's waving a towel, he's in the middle block. He's in the middle block. Three windows from the right, three windows from the right. Okay, so uh, we get reports that hundreds of firefighters uh, were on the scene within a matter of hours. Um, as far as we know, that no one got any rescue attempts on their phones or in any level of media um, we're not saying that no rescue attempts happened but obviously I think the council spent tens of millions as far as I understand putting cladding on the year before which uh, is not not fireproof which uh, may have caused the building to go up even faster um, the pipes were moved from inside the inside cavities of the building to the outside which if you have a fire that's that's very dangerous and so the building was passed for fire safety even though it had no sprinklers even though it had no um, way or means of escaping from the building in an event of a fire one stairwell and they couldn't even spend sixty thousand pounds to fix a, an elevator which uh, which wasn't working so uh, this, this is manslaughter this is um, people are responsible for this th this event uh, the council seemed to be primarily very very responsible for um, the, the, the fire safety of this Grenfell building in London a very high profile area of London as well um, so it makes you really wonder Three, three 
wind or something, right? And, bruv, I feel to go up there myself, bruv, on that stairwell, bruv. Oh, fuck's sake, man, this is rushing, pissing me off, man. I feel to go up the fucking stairwell myself, man. No, because my brethren's are in there, fam. My brethren's are in there. Well, come, we can't see them, I'm a kid, I'm not, and I'm missing. Okay, so he wants to go up and rescue them. Uh, as far as we understand, police stop people from actually entering the building and they actually bullhorn people to stay where they were um, in that burning uh, tower. They, they actually bullhorn them to stay where they were and a lot of these people stayed where they were and they're not here today. Now, this um, is just one example of a very, very simple to use um, you know, high tower uh, rescue, which would probably cost a few thousand pounds, I would say. And you'd, you'd, you'd at least, if, even if you had half a dozen of those within the tower, just think of the amount of people who might have uh, saved their lives. The escape chute is operational in less than one minute, even when used by people who are not technically minded or in a panic. like a UK web address <laughs> Unbelievable. so the council obviously just overlooked uh, in case there's a fire where's the rest you would like further yeah. information please visit our website www.escape-shoot.net uh, maybe that's for the council down in London to check that out I think this is how it works guarantees superior worldwide production standards in over 80 countries you just basically no other life-saving system can be activated so safely and be ready to use in such a short period of time not age weight or height of the user will affect the system this video is like 2009 people with disabilities can use it yep. with ease so so this is like a um eight-year-old video that that i just basically accessed within safety net fire and there we have it you know uh, you know, <laughs> I'm not working at present, but I bet if I worked for the city council, I'd be recommending these um, for their buildings. Uh, if I worked at the council, I'd probably be told I'd be, uh, it'd cost too much or something. Or <laughs> these are people's lives they could have just saved, um, spending a few thousand quid getting some of these escape shoots. Um, so there was, there was so many hours that passed. And you think that if there's a local circus there, they could have had a safety net, they could have had trampolines, they could have had uh, safety nets, they could have had bouncy castles all set up for people just to jump basically and, and uh, have a chance of survival, have a chance of survival rather than just jumping out the, the burning building with no one down there. As far as we know, someone threw out their child. Um, from about the 10th floor and apparently I'm not sure if the child survived but someone tried to catch him and we're seeing at least 50 children dying in this fire with no visible rescue attempts because I can see them and I feel helpless and I don't feel like you lot are doing enough. Where's the things for them to land on? If he wants to jump, where's the things for them to land on? Where's the stuff for them to land on? 11th floor, three windows to the right, right in the middle, right in the middle block. Yes, yes, he's still in there. He's, he's alive, he's alive, but he's waving something. He's definitely alive. All right, follow me, follow me, follow me, follow me, follow me. I'll show you, follow me. All right, look, right there. Follow me, follow me, follow By me. By the way, this me. is not an actor. Follow me, follow me, I'll show you right now. 
you know? Now He's out on the That's just that's just a real event, man. You see that person waving that towel? Yes. That person waving that towel right there. Yeah, thank you. You see him, yeah? Thank you. Can you thank okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I mean, can't people understand uh, the magnitude of this? I watched a video the other day as well. It's believed to be about 69 days before the uh, black hole uh, moon. I think there's a solar eclipse event happening in a, in a couple of months. Uh, so some say this was all planned, set up. Well, it seemed to be as if uh, they're giving the people the least chance of survival. And uh, when these emergency services showed up, um, it's just not clear you know, what sort of effect they had, except to stop people from leaving their, their flat. Um, this is um, manslaughter, so, you know, in, in, a, in a massive scale. And it must have been horrendous. And I think Lily Allen even broke down, and she's like a, a you know, a pop star or whatever, you know, um, probably the first time she's, she's cried in her life. You know, but it must have been a seriously emotional, traumatic thing to watch. Um, families, children, people um, shouting out from their windows with no, um, no way of them escaping. Um, yeah, he's got his head out the window, he's good. You're right. I, I, see, I think the survival toll was, as far as we know, 78 people escaped from the building. 78. And so it doesn't take a, a genius to say that it was at night time. Most people were at home. You know, it wasn't during working hours. And so the capacity within that tower... Uh, let's just check the capacity of the Grenfell Tower. Okay, all right, cool. I got a better understanding now. Basically, the reason why they can't get to him is because this tower that he's in, from the second floor upwards, is all on fire. So basically, from the second floor up, it's totally covered in flames. So they can't get past the second floor. So that staircase that I just showed you, lot. Um, where I just walked past if you was look if you was on my live, you saw that stairwell. You can go two floors up that stairwell, but up two floors up from there is all in flames, so they can't get through it. This is like official Wikipedia majors to be an updated obviously very recently. Um capacity we're talking about six hundred people. Um that's what it's saying, six hundred. So you're literally talking hundreds of people here uh, potentially dead, um, families dead, entire families just just wiped out overnight. We see like um, 120 apartments within this. You can see your average maybe four four people in a family or three or four people average. So you know you're saying you're talking about 500 people. You know around about that you're talking hundreds here. Um, and the official figure is 17, 17 dead. So um, why why they're stopping the the, the real story coming out um, is, is is just going to cause I think a lot of anger from the local residents. That's my opinion. It's, it's anger, you know, like 17 dead. Yeah. The user can be evacuated from a building quickly through its spiral-shaped inner hose. So this is like... Um, too difficult for them to get these in. Save people Depending on requirements, the chute can be manufactured in lengths ranging from 2 to 80 meters.
The device is installed with complete discretion and does not alter the appearance of the building, regardless of whether it's installed in an office or apartment building, on a rooftop, balcony, or terrace. The residents of Grenville Tower didn't want the cladding to go up. They were fighting against it. We were petitioning. We didn't want that to go up. There's unconfirmed reports that they want to sell off this land and they need that tower block to stay because they made a new school so they put this cladding around it to make it a lot more presentable but it's just been a fireball and a fire trap for people residents knew residents had concerns they raised them with the tmo but the tmo took no notice of the residents they don't care about you they have a duty of care to us and they have haven't showed us one duty of care since this fire has taken place. The physical presence from the council and TMOs, from what I've seen and I've been helping in, in the local centres for the last 48 hours and it's been non-existent in my eyes. We have been forgotten about. The council forget us. There, there's been an absolute lack of presence from the local council. All the organisations that have been collecting donations, they've said there's no one coordinating, it's chaotic, all they're doing is accepting those donations, whether it's food, whether it's financial, and there is no one on the ground from the council saying this is what we're going to be doing. We just want to know why the TMO is not here, why they're not representing, why they're not supporting they not the community, us? why they're not at the, at the centres giving out advice, people are, are lost. The, the people in the hotels are now ringing family members and friends to say, we, we, we're in bed and breakfast, but that's it, we've got no food, we've got no medication, we've got no change your clothes clothes, we've got no toiletries, what are we to do next? We need people on the ground from the local council to give us some answers, to give us some direction on... So, so this is like manslaughter on a massive scale and the local council are again just doing absolutely zero nothing and I mean what's the answer to this exactly? Um, I guess these the, the survivors have got to be able to sue the council for a lot of a lot of money I would I would say um, because of neglect and because of I'm I'm not sure. I mean, somebody's taking donations, and I mean, it just seems chaotic, absolutely chaos. Nobody's taking responsibility for. It. Obviously, it's, it's September the 11th. No one took responsibility for it. You know, as apparently um, terrorists who flew a plane into the Twin Towers in New York City. Well, that's the official story. No official story here yet. That is the main entrance to the offices of Kensington and Chelsea Borough. It looks like people are actually trying to get in to the council to make their point directly. They've been frustrated that they haven't seen officials from the capital. lives were snuffed out on June 14th in a fire that was witnessed around the world. People on the ground said it looked like the authorities wanted people to burn. A few months ago, the city of London added flammable insulation to this building, the Grenfell Tower, a tower that recently became inaccessible to fire crews, a tower where residents had complained for years about exposed gas pipes giving any fire added ammunition to spread. A tower with no sprinkler system, yet passed fire inspections. A tower where an emergency stairwell was denied funding by the City of London. Oh, but the story gets worse. After the authorities responded to the fire, they didn't do a damn thing to evacuate the building. No rescue helicopters, no suicide nets to catch people, nothing. Instead, they told residents to shelter in place and to fucking burn. This is an outrage, ladies and gentlemen. But wait, the story gets even worse than that. The mainstream media is now reporting that the origin of the fire was in an apartment on the fourth floor, and that the perp was an Ethiopian immigrant who had gathered his luggage before warning anyone. 
Numerous witnesses say they saw the man with luggage before he started banging on his neighbor's doors. And while that might give you something to think about, the account turns out to be a glitch in the matrix. The story of an Ethiopian man with luggage came out yesterday, June 16th. But on June 15th, in the Daily Mail article titled, Just 15 Minutes to Disaster, they described the perp as a white British man with luggage. That's the glitch. The suspect's description has changed, and that article is still up. No retraction, no correction. So you add in the recent fire-enhancing insulation put up by the City of London. The authorities intend to watch civilians burn. And then the change in the suspect's description. Well, what you have here is some controversy. All right, so this is not the official story, but um, this is people who have done some investigation. It's still not the official story because uh, they can't make up their mind if it's a black man from Africa or it's a white man from the UK or whatever. That, um, But it was known, as I said, from about the fourth or fifth floor. Uh, that's where the fire started. Now... With that information, you would think that the fire services would be able to quickly put that fire out and stop it spreading to the rest of the building. But, you know, so there's, the, there's uh, some serious, 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 um, not just repercussions, I mean, the, the evidence points to a, a deliberate, the, the, this is a deliberate uh, fire. Johnny Supertramp. much of what happened last night. What did you see? Um, I was riding back maybe like 2 a.m. I seen that one line of fire. It looked like it was contained at the time. And then like by the time I got here, it was probably two of those lines of flats were on fire like that. Like mainly the top bit. And then it took maybe an hour and then like most of the building was on fire. But I'm not gonna lie, one thing I wanted to say though, this thing that they're all saying about, oh, it might have been a fridge that exploded or something like that. I don't know about all of that, but what I do know is they did regeneration last year to that building that they're talking about doing to all of these buildings. They did it to that building only 10 million pounds they're talking about and put these shoddy plastic things on there that set, set up a light because they want more reasons to knock these blocks down. There's two options. They could either regenerate the blocks or they could knock them down. And after that, I'm, I'm not so sure that was totally an accident. I'm oh, not even going to lie. I'm not, I'm not even going to lie to you. You because can, you can are, pause me there, but I'm not going to lie. The whole yeah. situation that's going on in you this area, the way, that they, they don't want us, the way that they don't oh, yeah. want us here, and they put those, those rich man's blocks over there, and then they tell certain man in Frinstead they can't even go into that, that section. That's outrageous. I can't lie. The way that they, they treat man in here is terrible, isn't it? So I, 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 can't even, I can't even take the belief out of my mind that that, was, that, that wasn't just an accident. Do you know what I'm saying? I, I, I'm not gonna lie. I think, I think it's fucked, and I think. But we don't know. We, we yeah, are. We, it's so early yeah, we don't know. We don't know. But you're talking about the re regeneration that happened last year yeah. to, to apparently make these blocks better. And then these fires have never happened. I've lived here my entire life. My mom's lived here a very long time, and these these kind of things have never ever happened in this area. Like, I don't know what they spent 10 million pounds on. But the lifts in this block and all the blocks around, they only cost 60 grand to fix and they still never replaced them throughout the time I've lived here. So 10 million for that? No, they didn't. No, 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 no. I'm not really, I'm not really fucking with the government right Don't now. That's all I'm saying. Hey, yeah. I'm going to apologize for your language. I mean. Um, it happened 69 days before the August 21st black hole moon. Now this is really significant because that 69 days is also a Freemason symbol. You see it in the Freemason lodges. Here it is on the Royal Arch. And here it is inside a Masonic lodge or temple, 69. And the 96 also is the same thing, a 96 or a 69 because each, uh, as long as it has the six and the nine, it is a symbol. I mean, this was a raging inferno in this, this is a cement block building, uh, a raging inferno. So obviously this wasn't a fire that started by accident or a refrigerator blew up like they're telling us. Obviously this fire was set intentionally. Now from what I understand, this building underwent upgrades recently. Same and similar way that the World Trade Centers also underwent the, a, reno, a, re, a renovation I think one to two months before 9-11. So 
one last prophetic statement in their post that should haunt those responsible for the building. The Grenfell Action Group has a long history of raising concerns about the almost criminally lax manner in which the KCTMO treats fire safety issues and we are on record as stating that it is our belief that a serious and catastrophic incident will be the undoing of this mini mafia who pose as a bona fide organization responsible for the smooth running of the RBKC's social housing. That's all for this Neo Unrealist. So given the various factors here, from the insulation to the response from authorities, to the cover-up, the when and where this happened, that leaves only one reasonable conclusion. This towering inferno was a Gladio B event, an act of state-sponsored terrorism. In fact, the chances of this being a state-sponsored terror attack is at about 95%. 95% certainty. Whereas the chances of these variables lining up in the way they did in a worst case scenario sequence of events is only at about 5%. And now the entire city of London has to look at this giant tombstone of death for months, if not years to come. If you're listening to this, you are. The